Hey everybody, I've got another day in the fish room here. A little bit of better time management between my time here and time at the store. So I'm just gonna get a lot of things done that are way overdue and just take you guys along. So I kind of got a head start here before I figured I should probably start filming for the day um, with this tank. This tank had a ton of duckweed on it, like probably like that thick of duckweed on the top. So I removed as much as I could, made a mess of this tank. I have the water level down because I took all the overflows out so that um, the remaining duckweed hopefully will um, overflow out uh, the drain in the back. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this tank. Obviously the 24 karat gold guppies have exploded in the time that this tank was kind of just blacked out. Couldn't really see in it, I just threw food in there. Um, there's a ton of cherry shrimp in here, uh, probably at least two, 300 all over the place. I've got different generations of blue-eyed lemon bristlenose, both the short and long fin in here, and a ton of assassin snails. So I'm probably gonna take the assassin snails and the shrimp, a good number of them to the store. Um, I'm gonna probably move the long fin uh, versions to their own tank because they were just kind of grow out, but I see that female there um, in the cave. So uh, they're probably old enough now to start breeding on their own. So I'll probably put, set them up today in their own tank. But yeah, this is a cool, everything, all the other plants died except the crypts. So the crypts were able to handle the very, very low light. Um, this is the Wendedeye, uh, bronze or red, I forget which one it is, it's supposed to be the red, um, but you could see the different color leaves coming in now that the plant has um, more light. Um, we've got some of the uh, bronze coming out. Um, but yeah, they, the crypts do really well in low light. So much, like I couldn't even see this tank uh, through that. Uh, duckweed and one of the main things I need to do today if you notice all of these tanks the water level is lower and the reason that is is because the tanks are all drilled and have the overflow like all the other tanks I never got a chance to actually set up the auto water change system to it so even though they're drilled um, there's no water feeding it so that's all evaporation I've got water sprite in a lot of these that's just taken over. Algae on the front of the glass on a lot of these. I've got these that are parent raising, these um, blue marble pearl scale angelfish. So I've got three batches, three tanks of babies growing up, and then I gave them a chance to kind of parent raise here, and um, they did. So these guys are big enough now where I'm gonna take them out, combine some of the spawns that are very similar size along with these guys, and then I'll put a slate in and let them lay again. Um, I also need to kind of make sure that these angels are not being too aggressive with each other that I noticed. And I've got these um, red rose tail guppies. We've got the female there. Let me adjust this light here. Maybe we'll see them better in the front. So if you guys saw in a previous video, I was doing the tactic of the fresh imports, um, trying to get as many babies as I could and raise those babies up is usually what I do. So you see we've got a lot of pretty males, but all the fry ended up being males. So pretty rotten luck. So um, I do still have this one big female left. So if I could get one drop out of her, um, that'd be great. So what I'm gonna do here is take all the males out and just leave her in here. And I've got my super red bristle nose spawning in here as well. And the entire tank is filled with the water sprite. So as soon as we get a drop from her, I'm confident that some of the babies will make it. So we'll make sure that these guys come out, give her a break. Um, I've got the auto feeder on here. That'll keep her nice and full. It's feeding the baby plecos in here. Ton of water sprite. So hopefully I get one more spawn from her and I'm able to continue to work with this line. I'm going to be moving the angelfish into this tank on the end here. Definitely have a lot of angel babies going on. We've got the platinum pearl scales and more of the super reds. And we finally have a, a nice size batch of the Philippine blues. So those will be on the website soon. I forget what these are, but they're at a different stage. But a nice size spawn. 
Pretty sure those are more Philippine blues. What's nice about having the store um, is that it's harder for me to make too many angels, uh, which can happen. You get a large spawn like this. Um, I'm lucky enough to have you guys ordering from the website as one of my places to, to put the babies. Um, but also uh, for the store, I'm having trouble sourcing healthy angelfish. So what I do a lot of the times is um, right now I have people breeding some of them locally. So they're bringing in nice sized angelfish to the store, but that's few and far between. So once I um, am able to produce enough for online and the store, a lot of these will be coming to the store. So um, I gotta work with different lines. I'm gonna work with those black, black angelfish. Um, I do wanna have more uh, blue marbles uh, pairs, not just the one. And um, I do have another zebra lace line that I'm just growing out. So angels are really popular in the store, really great fish, becoming one of my favorites next to guppies. So hopefully I can produce enough for these. So a couple things going on with this rack. So I think today I'm gonna to film a separate video completely redoing this tank. These are the Iliadon Fursidens of the Trout Goodians from Greg Sage. I have a piece that I've been waiting for a long time that's gonna be used in here. So I'll probably just do a whole separate video on this disaster. But for now up here, I've got this empty 10 gallon. It had the electric blue cars in and I brought them to the store. Um, and it kind of just sat here. Obviously there's algae growth with nothing in there and just light on it. Um, we've got some detritus worms here on the front. I was gonna scrape all this down and, and completely rinse it and, and give it a fresh start, but I do have these um, Mayuki Madaka rice fish that are the only strain that survived all my strains, uh, losing my strains here. And um, I did talk about it in a previous video, but I think it's because this is the only strain I had where I kept a significant number of the fry just because it was one of my favorites that I wanted them in large numbers for myself just because they they do almost glow white more so than like the platinum strains I do have this java moss that's been sitting in here for over two weeks so I'm thinking about just throwing that in the 10 gallon here there's a ton of microorganisms algae I'll feed small foods in here and it'll be perfect for the fry I also need to move these Dumbo ear platinum mosaic guppies. These are the ones that I chose to reset the line with the breeders. So I took all the fish out. I've been catching them all in here. It used to be full of them. So I took a lot of them to the store. Um, and over the days, I've just been catching more and more because there's so much jungle val in here that I can't catch all the fish. Like there's one fry in there still. So that's all right. So I'm going to move the adults back in. I've got a couple fry in here. I've had these guys in here for like three weeks, but um, not a lot of fry coming out of here, but I'm confident once I put them back in here with all this jungle valve and all this cover that the colony will start going again. I also have to make my rapashi that I usually make once a week. I go through quite a lot of it just because I got a lot of quarries, a lot of plecos, and for anybody that doesn't know like what rapashi is, it actually starts off as this powder and you boil water and you mix that in with the water and keep stirring it and you let it sit in the fridge or freezer and it becomes this gel. You know, like you get like pieces of it here. And the way I feed it is I just use these here and you know, put pieces in different sizes, but it becomes just a hard gel and the fish love it. Something pretty exciting today is the fish room's getting an upgrade. So this is a standard dehumidifier that has been doing a pretty good job with the fish room so far. Uh, this uh, Colzer one, it's a commercial grade one, I got it on Amazon, um, was the one I was using for the last year. It heated the room really well for me and it kept the humidity level with all these tanks um, at where I needed it to be. Um, for some reason, a year after using it, it kind of stopped working. Uh, luckily this has a two year warranty on it they didn't have replacements for this one. They actually just gave me my money back. So Colzer, you know, is a, is a good company as far as um, standing by their products and their warranties. It was pretty easy. So they recommended this one, which is pretty, uh, pretty hefty dehumidifier here. It's um, like a step up from this commercial grade one. So this one is another commercial grade dehumidifier I'm going to be setting up today. 
I'm not sure what to expect. I'm hoping it lets off more heat and keeps it even less humid in here. All right, so a couple things I noticed when I was setting it up. Obviously it's much louder because it's a much bigger dehumidifier. Doesn't matter to me just because I shut off the dehumidifiers when I'm filming anyway. And um, the cord, the electrical cord and the drainage hose are much, much shorter. So I kind of have to have it jammed in the corner right now. I'm sure I could fix that later, but um, you would think that this commercial grade one would come with um, a little bit longer of cords, especially because the other models do. But right now what I'm doing is making sure that um, a circuit doesn't blow. The, um, all the stuff I have hooked up puts a real strain on the um, circuits here. And with this dehumidifier being much larger, I expect it uses more electricity. So I'm gonna sit here for a while, at least an hour or two, while I'm working in here and make sure that this runs without, um, you know, blowing a fuse. It's been about 20 minutes and it's already dropped the percentage of humidity and has actually raised the temperature in here a couple degrees. Um, I could already tell and it's nice that this one has a reader um, on top of my little one here so I can kind of compare the two. The last thing I'm going to do today is actually move the one Philippine Blue Angelfish in here out and put some plecos in. So I did have a nice pair of the Philippine Blue Angels in here. Unfortunately, because I have the top open here, uh, because I have my brine shrimp hatcheries hanging off the side here, kind of in the corner of the fish room, one of the angelfish actually jumped out. Uh, the algae is crazy in here, again, because the brine shrimp hatchery. So I'm notorious for leaving the light on and kind of forgetting about it overnight. So this tank sometimes gets light overnight way more than the other tanks and it happens more you know pretty often I'm pretty bad at that but what I'm gonna put in here are some long fin blue-eyed lemon bristlenose so I've been growing out a couple different groups of them and I think I have at least one male and female adult and what will be really good for them is obviously all this diatom algae as a snack and I don't think they'll jump out never seen a pleco jump out of a tank before definitely seen my fair share of fish jumping out of tanks before but i think they'll be a safe bet in there versus the angels and they shouldn't jump out and they'll eat up all that algae okay so i was able to grab a pair out of there nice looking male nice big female female's a little lighter than the male try to get a shot without the glare Nice long fins on these guys. Took a long time to grow these out, but I really like um, how long the fins are and the coloring on them, the blue eyes. So hopefully these guys will pair up and start laying some eggs for me. I do see some younger ones in there that aren't sexed out yet or just a little behind. So right now we just have the one pair and we'll see how they do.